On today's episode is free agent news, news, and more news. We talk about the moves that we like. We talk about the moves that we do not like and all the implications for these fantasy football players. Make sure you do not miss a moment. Subscribe. Leave us some comments on your favorite moves of the free agent frenzy and enjoy. Hey, this is Darren Waller. I am the Wallerus, and you are listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Cuckoo, cachoo! Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. <laughs> what was that? I'm excited, Mike. We have a lot to talk about, and we've got to talk about none of it yet. But today's the day. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers, Andy, Mike, and Jason with you. I'm really excited because we have not even shared a lot of our thoughts on some of these landing spots and transactions with each other yet. We're usually always in the studio around each other just annoying the, you know, the life out of one another, but we've been apart this the last few days. And yeah. so I'm I'm really excited to get into it. How have you liked the break from us? It's been magical. Really? Yeah. No, I've really missed you guys. Well, the, yeah. the break has been good, but I have been I mean, I'm just back from the uh, the the metaverse. Okay. Like, I mean, I went full lawnmower man. It was just <laughs> attached. I was inside of Twitter. Like that's where I digitally lived there for the last uh -huh. few days, just absorbing all of the content. A Twitter Airbnb yes. in there. <laughs> you you checked in. Uh -huh. Very expensive. Right. But, but look for for free agency. Mm -hmm. Spare no expense. Mm -hmm. uh, no, we have we have a ton to talk about. Obviously, excited to have you with us. People really enjoyed. The uh, Deucer built show on Tuesday. The games we were playing. The Jason's Jason's in a black shirt today. Oh yeah. So huh, uh, the weird. stats continue to. What was it? Uh, did, all but eight. Eight were navy shirts. The rest were black shirts. Something and one like that. once yeah. was you dressing up as Hagrid. Yeah. No. Uh, today I'm looking good. I'm covering them up, and uh, <laughs> we're gonna have we're gonna have a great show. Also, another shout out oh, if you are a Foot Clan member, if you. You might not even necessarily listen to the Footcast through the off season. Uh, maybe you do, maybe you don't. You must check out this last Footcast because it was not us. It was the Deucers. It was a Deucer cast. Kyle, Brooks, and Jeremy entirely doing the, the whole show as a special one-off version. You must go listen to it. And if you're not, head over to jointhefoot.com. You don't want to miss that episode. It was like the behind the scenes of the fantasy footballers. I learned a lot listening to it. Me too. About the work that gets done around here. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. A uh, couple other headlines before we get into all of the big news. Uh, number one here, the Ultimate Draft Kit. It's available at ultimatedraftkit.com. The big news there, the Dynasty Pass has its second release, the post-combine update. New rookie risers and fallers. New rookie mock draft is in there. Um, you do not want to miss that content. The, I think the ability to start predicting these players, we're becoming more and more able to see where their potential landing spots are, especially as free agency progresses, right? Mm -hmm. You have teams that have made commitments to running backs or, or let running backs go. We'll talk about some of that today, but um, make sure you get in there, ultimatedraftkit.com. The other headline if you go to shopballers.com, we finally have them fantasy footballers hats available. Now Mike is wearing one on the show today. He looks great. I was tipping the hat like you'd go to there we go. Okay. Yeah, you needed the camera on you. Yeah. So uh shopballers.com if you want to check those out, you can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Jason is at Jason FFL. Mike is at FF Hitman. Not Hatman. Uh he's almost FF Hatman. I mean, that's my that's my burner account. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, I'm at Andy Holloway. <laughs> Uh, anything else, Brooksy, that we, we need to talk about? No, nah, let's get into it. Free Agent Frenzy. All right, we're, we're going to cover some of the bigger news first, and then we'll walk through all the teams and transactions that we know about. I mean, stuff is happening even moments before the show, like Chase Edmonds finding a home. Yeah. 
Uh, but we will talk through everything we're aware of. I, I'm with Jason. I think it's going to be exciting because we have not discussed many of these transactions amongst ourselves until now. But the big one, the first one that broke, Panthers receiving the number one overall pick in the draft, and they barely gave up anything. <laughs> Just kidding. The Bears, they get the ninth overall pick, a second round pick, next year's first from Carolina, and DJ Moore. Yes! Yes, we did! Now, so, this, now we did. This is a this is a Justin, Justin Fields. Fields. Okay, I just that is the Justin Fields hive assembling, saying we did it, fam. We stuck together. There were some very hard times, and we weathered the storm. And we have a superstar fantasy quarterback with a legitimate number one wide receiver to go along with pretty good secondary options, and we are pumped. Yes, okay. Yes. All right. We are. Um. Well, let, let's break it down because there are... I just did. <laughs> okay, that's it. All right, we're done. No, look, DJ Moore is the, the... Let's talk about his future in Chicago because it, the only team that you could trade him to that had fewer pass attempts than Carolina... Or, I'm sorry, they were the fourth lowest. The Bears were the lowest. They had 22 pass attempts per game. He will share time with Darnell Mooney, who's an elite wide receiver. Uh, Chase Claypool will be playing football. Cole Komet, everybody likes Cole Komet's future. Um, I'm curious where you see DJ Moore's, like if you said free DJ Moore, I wouldn't put him in Chicago. No. Um, I don't think that that means he won't have uh, relevance for fantasy, but we did see like Chase Claypool, Mike, somebody that, you know, has had made big plays, done some things invisible in Chicago, despite the fact that, Darnell Mooney was injured. DJ Moore goes to this team. Obviously, it's a little bit of a chicken or egg thing, right? You don't have as many pass attempts if you don't have receivers. But I still think that they're going to put Justin Fields in the position to succeed, which will mean probably bottom five, bottom ten pass attempts in the league, Jason. Where do you see D DJ Moore's future now that he's escaped? Yeah, the pass attempts will definitely without a shred of doubt go up um we've seen this with several quarterbacks you know Josh Allen didn't throw the ball much uh, Jalen Hurts didn't throw the ball much they when you add the wide receiver they say okay well look you're not going to win a bunch of games not throwing the ball they they just can't do that they can't throw the ball 19 times and expect to win in today's modern NFL so the passing volume will go up but this is not a great landing spot for DJ Moore it's not one of those look here's what DJ Moore is going to be at the end of the season Wide receiver 20, because that's just who he is and what he does. Right. This is not great for DJ Moore. It's not great for Darnell Mooney, but this is phenomenal for Justin Fields. For Justin Fields and for the Bears organization. The whole entire offense, I think, will be better. Darnell Mooney's not a one. He is an awesome two. And I didn't think that there was a, a world that existed, you know, with what the free agents that were out there with this current draft class of wide receivers where Darnell Mooney could go and be an excellent wide receiver too, stretching the field on the outside. Because you felt like Claypool couldn't be the number one for <laughs> Clay, the Chicago Bears. I, I thought Claypool has a real chance to be one of the top five wide receivers for the Bears this year. Um, and I still... <laughs> Maybe. I still, Maybe. Well, I, a chance. A chance to be top five, and I still believe that, um, even after the DJ Moore trade. So it's, it's pretty big news. But this really opens things up for the rest of the receivers to go and be who they are. And I, you know, I don't see how barring injury, Justin Fields is not a top five quarterback in fantasy. His, his upside is the number one quarterback. Mike, did you want to elaborate on your, we did it fam? No, I mean, I'm with Jason that Justin Fields. He's, should, the, he's the winner here. Obviously yes. it's a commitment by the team, the bears. Yeah. that That's the other thing is you, you still had a little bit of, of uh, just, well, maybe they should trade fields and take a quarterback, reset the clock of the rookie contract, but this is down to nine. Is, <laughs> they're, they're keeping Justin Fields. Uh, DJ Moore, I, I mean, I agree basically with everything Jason said, that the volume won't be there. The, I think there'll be more opportunity for big plays because you have mobile Justin Fields scrambling around finding DJ Moore breaking free, so I think that you'll have more spike weeks than we've had with him in the past, but he won't be 
He's not going to be like a PPR machine. He'll be, you know, an 11, 1,000 to 1,100 yard receiver, six to eight touchdowns, which is good for fantasy football. It's not, but this isn't like Stephon Diggs moving. This isn't like DeAndre Hopkins moving, where even though he had a, a essentially a 28% target share in Carolina, if he gets that, th those are those are still not elite. Those are six targets. That's six targets a game based right. on last year's projections. Right. However, Justin Fields is a better passer to his first read in the offense. Mm -hmm. sure. And that becomes DJ Moore at this point. Uh, I'm very excited for the Bears. This was the move. I mean, thank you to Houston from oh, all the man. Bears fans <laughs> for winning that game for no reason against Indianapolis. I believe it was a Jordan Aikens Hail Mary. Yes. Um, so it's exciting. Carolina now has the number one pick. And uh, I know C.J. Stroud is the betting favorite. I still think he's going to be Bryce Young. Interesting. Mm. Okay. Um, but, you know, Vegas knows better than all of us. So, uh, Well, it was Vegas, and then there was the uh, the Josh McCown video where he sure. was on with friend of the show, Josh Norris, uh, and McCown just, to me, it just, it just couldn't stop saying great things about Stroud. And McCown is the quarterback coach yes. for the Panthers now. So this is true inside the building information. I think that is what leads people to believe yep. C.J. Stroud. Uh, C.J. Stroud was my number one quarterback, you know, as, as far as just pre-NFL draft rankings. Um, and and you got to throw Anthony Richardson in the mix as well as it's possible he could be that number one pick. You know, the story with Frank Reich has been he can't find his quarterback. Now he will have the opportunity to have his pick of the litter. Still, some people talk about them trading down if they, you know, potentially yeah. swap spots. Um, it also puts Arizona in the power position in the draft because the first two spots are going to be quarterbacks. If somebody wants to come up for an Anthony Richardson, it's going to be Arizona that they trade up with. So long as the Colts don't trade for Lamar Jackson, that would be the wrench sure. in, in that. Yeah, I mean, there's situation. still a lot of other teams that need quarterbacks, right? Yeah, I mean, but you just wouldn't have to get ahead of the Colts at four. So you wouldn't have to trade up to Arizona at three. Um, all right, so the Cowboys, they're parting ways with Ezekiel Elliott. Ooh, Man. doggy. They're going to save a ton of money. Tony Pollard, Goodness. he was the RB1, seven, and three, and three starts without Ezekiel Elliott. Now, it would be very Cowboys for them to somehow draft a, a running back. <laughs> my, my first thought when this happened, because we know that they want to run the ball. Yeah. I mean, literally, they got rid of Kellen Moore because they were too good at scoring too quickly. I mean, that's kind of what McCarthy was talking about, that they want to run the ball, rest the defense, and pass less. And that's why I did not think that this Man, transaction was going to happen. when you say that out loud, it sounds so <laughs> it, stupid. Yeah, because it is so stupid. Just score more points. That's how you win. But um, Imagine being disappointed when the ball's in the end zone because it happened too quickly. Yeah, oh, my defense has to go back on the field. I mean, that's do, not going to win me games. Do they not realize that like every single additional play on the drive is an opportunity for something to go wrong, too? Yeah. Uh, Anyways, go ri on. Ridiculous. I didn't think they were going to cut Ezekiel Elliott for the cap savings. I know, I know they were up against it, but they need another back. And I believe they think that they need another back. My first initial thought was, well, we know where Bijan's going. They're going to draft him in the first. But they don't draft until pick 26. I don't think Bijan Robinson is around uh, for, oh, for their pick. It would be so fascinating. It, it, it will be, but um, I, I would be shocked beyond measure if the Cowboys don't add some significant running back, whether through the draft on a uh, – it would probably be a day two pick, but possibly a day one pick, or one of the free agents that are out there that, you know, just cheaper than Zeke. There are, there are a lot of running backs available in the draft and in free agency that I wouldn't want to be one. Like right now, running backs, if you didn't already get a deal, which a couple guys did – um. It's tough. You're going to get a bunch of one-year deals. Yeah. Mama, and, don't let your kids grow up to be running backs. Yes. I mean, it is not fair. And Your body and, takes a beating, and your career is really short. and You get paid nothing, yeah. and nobody likes you, and they're, it's told that your position doesn't matter, mostly because I mean, look at doesn't. Dalvin Cook's situation right now. Yeah. Like Dalvin Cook had, had two of the better runs all last year in the league. He was paid. He's 27. He was paid. Yeah. You, you, you say that like it's... 
good for a running back no, to be I, 27. I'm just saying. It's look, good for a human being, but not for a NFL running back. I get it. But 27 is not 30 like Raheem Mostert's two-year deal. So I'm just saying, like, he's still running at he, – he may not be peak Dalvin Cook, but he's still an advantage to your team. And at this point in time, it's not an advantage. You hit the point where the contract is not worth the value – anymore and dynasty managers listen up we said this the last time that these uh big running back second contracts came through we talked about the fact that when joe mixon signed his big deal on dalvin cook and ezekiel elliott like that's the time to trade on those high-end running backs and capitalize because they're not seeing the end of that deal Dalvin Cook would not be under contract right now if he didn't just have surgery. The expectation was that they were going to cut Dalvin Cook for cap savings, except now they can't because if he failed a physical, all the money would be guaranteed. Very smart, Dalvin. I, I mean, these running backs, they're not spent. They're not washed completely, but they aren't worth those contracts. So for dynasty purposes, you capitalize on them and stay young. Just keep cycling the the younger running backs in dynasty. It's, just, it's so funny because it's like you can't keep those stars on your team when they are in their peak without giving them that deal. Right. So right. all these teams have – I mean, you look at the the touchdown leaders over the last five years. It is a – it's like an ordered list of players that are in decline right now that teams are having to figure out what to do. Alvin Kamara – and Dalvin Cook, and now Zeke gets cut. And, like, these were stars, and now they're just too expensive for their performance. And Every NFL team should just be using the franchise chat tag. I saw that if if they basically franchised Zeke every year since that big deal, they would have saved more money, paid him less guaranteed Damn. money. I mean, it's not fair, but that's right. what – if you've got a star running back, you should just be franchise tagging. The da and the Dalvin Cook news needs to be – mentioned was since we were yeah let's just talk about let's it. just talk vikings right so now. alexander madison their backup running back for the past four years was given a two-year deal worth seven million i th i think the guarantee i don't know if kyle if you have that somewhere it's probably almost I, all that money yeah almost all of it was guaranteed uh and so this is this could really go either way uh you know i've been kind of vocal on the show i like alexander madison as the player i i was really hoping he would get a shot to go be at least the leader of a timeshare, because basically everything's a timeshare. I'm not calling for, you know, Madison to be a true three down player. Oh yeah, so plus six point three five uh was guaranteed for Madison. And but but now with, with the guarantees that where they are, it does certainly seem like Dalva Cook they're trying to trade him. That's that would be what I think is most likely, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what will happen. The, the other option is he takes less money. I mean, that was an option for, for Ezekiel Elliott, to my understanding. Uh, right now, the but sentiment... But Zeke thought there was more money out. Oh. If he, did, it, if he took a lower contract with Dallas, he could still he could make more money in free agency. Yep. This is why he did it. And um, the, Dalvin's going to have to make that decision. Does he want to stay there for less money? Or does, are they going to move on? And, so, they, and, and, I mean, just look at the overall picture of what Minnesota has been doing. They're they're trimming down. Like, they've been letting players go. Adam who, Thielen. Who can, yeah, who can still contribute to the team, but they're trying to do salary cap things. Uh, um, so, Jason, do you think Dalvin Cook will be a Minnesota Viking? I don't think he'll be a Minnesota Viking at the start of the season, which means that Alexander Madison could be an exceptionally good running back this year if they don't add other significant pieces. Yeah, it seems like with that contract, like Mike said, it could go either way. I think they'll add somebody. It's sure. just a matter yeah. of are they adding a Travis Homer or are they adding a Charbonnet? Right. Oh, man. <laughs> don't, NFL, don't do that to me. That would just be... Oh, you'd be happy about that because I, you're more into Charbonnet than Madison. Yeah, but my dynasty team has, oh, been holding, gosh. has been holding Alexander Madison for four years for this very moment. Is it, though? Is it his moment, you think? I don't know. Yeah. But at least we have a chance now. No, no more uh, Adam Thielen. I mentioned that as well. K.J. Osborne had a couple big games at the end of the year. Uh, if that is – if he ends up in that high, you know, snap – count roll kj osborne will be interesting they, they're a pass first offense sure and uh, i was gonna say in your dynasty leagues just go and check if ty chandler happens to be sitting on the waiver wire he we, we talked about him at the end of the regular season as someone who needs to be stashed 
just in case a scenario like this pops up, but he could still be out there. We need to say goodbye to a couple of players. Uh, let's start with um, this guy. Yeah. Mm, yeah. J.D. McKissick released. J.D. McKissick might not play football again. Yeah, I mean, the the, the guy has so had wish him well. serious neck injuries the past couple of years, which, I mean, we've it kind of always been, you know, butting heads on this show with J.D. McKissick solely because of my love for my former champion, Antonio Gibson. But J.D. McKissick, incredible player, just <clears throat> unfortunate injuries. Matt Ryan <laughs> has been released by the Colts. <laughs> Oh, man. Our stupid Matt Ryan Carson Wentz bet is the gift that keeps on giving. Who will be out of the league first? Someone will sign Carson I, I, Wentz. I don't know. I, I don't know at this point. Do either one of them get a job as a backup? It's much higher odds than it's Wentz. I mean, Wentz wants to – he he said he's willing to take that role. That's what it comes down to. And is, I think that that's the problem. The, 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 what it comes down to is Matt Ryan just might say, I'll just retire with my – Millions and millions of dollars. The Chargers oh, have granted man. Austin Eckler permission to seek a trade. He's entering the final year of his deal. Could not come to an extension agreement with the team. He will be 28 when the season starts. <sighs> man. He's another player on that list. Yep. The slightly older than ideal, expensive running back. Now, it's hard for me to even picture the Chargers offense absent. Austin Eckler, he is so versatile. It is like he's very necessary. You're, you're legitimately deleting their best running back and maybe so you least, know one of their best say, receivers. I would say second best wide receiver. And so when you take those two elements out of the offense, Jason has already been on record. He guaranteed that they'd win the Super Bowl this year. Mm, they Bijan is going to be great for them. Um, oh, is that what you're? <laughs> oh, yes, I thought he was baby. going to Dallas. Oh, so we're no, at he can't get to Dallas well, because the Chargers pick at 21. Dallas is at 26. So we're at the stage now where all of these Every moves. Every single is, move is just seen through a lens of where can Bijan go now? That's that's truly how I am viewing every running back in the world. Is. That's it. A running back signing happens. I go, how does this affect Bijan Robinson's landing spot? <laughs> and my biggest worry right now is the Seattle Seahawks at twenty being stupid. Oh, um, oh we, no, they no. I know, Jason. I know it's terrible. No, no. we can combine forces. Yes. Do we need to start like a one of the uh, like a petition on yeah. online? Yeah. yeah, don't do it, Seattle. We, this legally cannot be allowed. For Kenneth Walker and Bijan, we need. Uh, Let's get. We need the government. Involved. I can tell you right now, we have enough shows, Brooksy, between now and no. and the draft. <laughs> no. We need. Why a, are you even bringing that up? I'm sorry. It's a fear in my heart. We need a, like a Bijan drop that, like the Bijan minute on the show, where Jason can reflect on recent happenings and how they affect Bijan Robinson's potential destination. <laughs> I'll just bring my notebook out, my little I diary. Mean, yeah, I think we need that. Uh, Mike, you can get working on that. Um, oh, gosh. Boy, there's a lot to talk about. My goodness. All right. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back with all of it. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers said on the Pat McAfee show, he intends to play for the Jets. He's waiting for the trade to finalize. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers did what Aaron Rodgers does, which is uh, he doesn't like the media very much. Oh, yeah, uh, they're dumb. Very much at all. They are able to get under his skin clearly as, I mean, he named several names, including the the special shout-out of, of saying how Adam Schefter somehow got his phone number and he texts back, uh, "I get what was the lose verbatim? my number, lose my number. Nice try though, or something like that, which is now infinitely memed across the internet because Schefter <laughs> screenshotted it and and put it up to confirm that it really happened. Which that mean that very funny move by uh, Adam Schefter. But so Aaron Rodgers went on on Pat's show and said, "It's not me, it's them. The Green Bay Packers want to move on from me. The New York Jets want me on their team. I want to keep playing." And I want to go be on the New York Jets. So that, like, of the forty-five minute or hour-long interview, that was like for for football and fantasy football. That was the 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 big spicy nugget. And he he just 
Aaron Rodgers saying, nope, 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 nope. I'm not holding the trade up. The Green Bay Packers are. Which, if you go on the show and you say you want to play for the Jets, you have disadvantaged the Jets. You have yeah. given leverage to the Packers. You've got a frothing fan base in New York who just, now they're just anxious and waiting for their management to get the deal done. The Packers don't have to do anything. Correct. That, and the, the power of the negotiations currently sits with the Green Bay Packers. Like All of the, the financials are better if, if Aaron Rodgers is on the Green Bay Packers. And the, they don't have to do anything. If, if Rodgers wants to retire, hold out, they have their quarterback sitting and waiting. Meanwhile, the They're New York pay through the nose. The New York Jets over there have they they pushed all their chips in too and said Zach Wilson's not our guy. We're going after Rodgers and all the free agent quarterbacks are now gone. It, it yeah, outside of them wink wink saying, "Hey, we'll make a run at Lamar Jackson." Right. to gain a, a modicum of leverage back in the deal. Look, they they're, they're already signing Rodgers' best friends. I mean, yeah. Alan Lazard Signed a four-year, forty-four million dollar deal. Um, I mean, Jordy Nelson was signed d this morning. <laughs> no, that didn't happen. But they want Randall Cobb. Well, we we don't potentially. know. Potentially, they want Mercedes Lewis. That was all being floated by the media, which accurate. Uh, well, I, I, all accurate. A wish list from Aaron Rodgers is Roger, accurate, one hundred percent. No, Rodgers. Uh, Rodgers said no. No, Rodgers said that he did not send a list of demands. It's more of a wish list. It's like, well, yeah, that's, I mean, that is that is that your whole. I mean, if you're like, look, you want to date me? Okay, well, here's what I want: these three things. That's a list of demands. That's a wish list, but that's a. I, look, it's those are those are my Mr. Rogers hostage negotiation letter. I just am shocked at the similarities between the end of Rogers in Green yeah. Bay and the end of Favre. We have done this show long enough or at least been around football long enough to remember Favre's departure. And what was the the number one thing when Favre was leaving Green Bay was that he took over every offseason mm -hmm. in the media. Every single year it was about him. And now Rodgers is in the same boat, going to maybe the same team to follow his time yeah. in Green Bay. And uh, I'm it's not confident that the Jets are the, the franchise capable of making this move in the right way. So I think this there's a it's a really high risk move. It's a what a forty year old quarterback. Yep. Who he, who's said multiple years in a row now that I might be done. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm shocked that when that you're the on the Jets edge of retirement, that's not good. That's not good for in a league like the NFL where every player is playing as hard as they possibly can. If you have part of your brain that wants to be out of this game. I think your odds of it going wrong are, are very high. He's going to play one season and cripple the Jets' future. So you better get a Super Bowl this year, and you're not going to. So Alan Lazard, I mean, arrives just to kind of emulsify Elijah Moore into a pulp. I mean, I, I think he's more the Corey, – Corey Davis I expect to get cut with this move. So I, I think he'll move really? in. Really? Yeah. Uh, the cap savings they're going to need it to to bring on Rodgers. Um, that that's my current expectation. Or the, was that based probably... on? Is that just your? Was that based on anything reports you no, heard? No, yeah, I've I've seen that there that that's a a common possibility. Okay. So, um, the expectation here bringing in Lazard would be that they are try to trade Corey Davis if they can't find a suitor, then they'll probably move so on. So right now, but, but you know Garrett Wilson and. Lazard are above the depth chart of yes. Elijah Moore, so it does nullify the chance of Moore starting in like too wide. And Corey stuff Davis like that. is an eleven point one million dollar cap hit, but they can get out of that contract for very cheap. Yeah, and 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 honestly, they very well might not be done if they go and grab Cobb or they go and grab uh, Odell Beckham. Yeah, he was El also Elijah on the Moore, wish list. I agree that Elijah Moore is someone that is very unimportant to me. Uh, for for fantasy, he's going to be a slot only player, and third at best on this team. So the, the big news here is really it's about Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson now is a pretty much locked and loaded top ten wide receiver for fantasy next year. Yeah. If what if I, it's Zach Wilson? No, I'm I'm going under the 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 pretense that Aaron Rodgers will okay. get to the Jets. Yeah. Do you? I mean, how? What's the ceiling for Garrett Wilson with Aaron Rodgers? ceiling like yeah best like where could he scenario? could he finish the number one wide receiver i think that is the ceiling yeah i, I don't think it's I don't unrealistic think so. to believe that he could have 1700 yards and 
12 touchdowns with his talent and Aaron Rodgers' capabilities. That, that's possible. It's certainly not. I wouldn't put him at the highest odds to finish there, but that's in the range of outcomes. All right. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> the Giants have traded for Darren Waller. This is great. The Raiders move. get a third round pick. And the Walrus arrives in New York. Jason, you said it's a great move. I think it's really smart because this is a team that desperately needs a legitimate receiving option, and there wasn't one to be had. And they thought a little bit outside the box. This trade is essentially Kadarius Tony for Darren Waller. The pick that they traded Kadarius Tony for is the one being sent back to the Raiders. And there just wasn't another, you know, you're, you're not going to fix this team with a Jacoby Myers or a Juju. Um, and having a big body Darren Waller, I know he's a little bit older, but he's 31, I think. He, uh, he will be 31 during this, this season. season. Is that so, old for a uh, Walrus? It's it, it's better for a Walrus. I mean, you've seen plenty of <laughs> now I have to look. large <laughs> lifespan of a Walrus. Large bodied, super athletic tight ends play 33, 34. I mean, look at what Kelsey's doing right now. So I'm less concerned with the age of someone in that body type. And they really, really need a weapon. So this is just smart to me. Okay. They may live up to 40 years. Oh, okay. So he's still he's got, got <laughs> some time before he dies. But males are mature, uh, 8 to 10 years of age, but generally cannot successfully compete against older, larger males until they're 15. <laughs> Ooh. So it's the old, larger ones yeah. that get it done. And he's an old, <laughs> larger one right now. Great news for Darren Waller. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> More groundbreaking analysis. <laughs> Sterling Shepard, a one-year deal. Uh, okay. I, a Achilles, ACL. Um, I'm not going to put it past him to get back on that I field and contribute. Going to say, the, he, he's a, at this point, I'm not going to bet on Sterling Shepard, but I will not bet against him. He got a better injury for what he was used to. Right. Yeah, the ACL's yeah, it's far, a better... It's far less complicated to return uh, from... An ACL How old is Sterling Shepard, Kyle? Do you have that age? For he me? is thirty. Okay, that you're not Kyle. Well, I don't trust. I you. had. I don't it. trust you. No, I'm not sure you're right. I'm, I've got good walrus information. He's thirty. Thirty point one. You're over there snorting up the <laughs> Madison. You know, yeah. I don't know what to. Do you believe. have more Madison news? <laughs> <laughs> I need it. Oh, I can't wait till like Antonio Gibson ends up on Minnesota. That's the with Charbonnet. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With, just put them all together. Just crush your we soul. We just need one team where all of your <laughs> misguided loyalty lies. Uh, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. There's no misguided loyalty to Charbonnet. Thank you. Okay. That's very guided. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm This deal right here is one I'm very interested in talking about because I think, I think it might be a home run. It could be. Carolina signed running back Miles Sanders. Four-year contract. $25 million. I want to remind people how good Miles Sanders was. He went 259 for 1,269 yards, 11 touchdowns, despite never getting a goal line opportunity, really, because Jalen Hurts took them all. Um, we watched this Carolina offensive line bully people mm -hmm. with far less talent at running back all last year. Um, they're returning all five starters. They were ranked ninth in football outsiders adjusted line yards, but literally they took over games. I remember it was at the Seattle game. They just ran and ran and, and this is Deontay Foreman and, mm -hmm. um, Chuba. So Miles Sanders is a very good running back. Yeah. And I, this might be the perfect move for Carolina. It, it really is. I, I would like Miles Sanders more going into this season than I did last year for the Eagles because of. It, it, it's a it's a kind of a double-edged sword when you talk about the touchdown situation because you can get poached by Jalen Hurts, but also you get a lot more opportunity, you know, being inside the 10-yard line so on Miles the Eagles. So Miles Sanders last year had 13 carries inside the five that turned into seven touchdowns. Jalen Hurts had 19 inside the five that turns into nine. Yeah, which is very exciting stuff for a player we'll talk about later in the show. Um, but r right now I, I do think the Panthers were one of those locations where the, the Panthers and the Falcons, you know what this team wants to do. They want to run the ball 
99% of all plays, if possible. The fact that they went out and spent money on a quality back, they've got a good offensive line, he's going to get the opportunities. This is a guy who, if he stays healthy, I think he's going to come to the 300 touch mark. And for fantasy, you just don't bust if you get 300 touches. I agree with you. I think it's important to point out which situations we like more than you know their previous home. And Miles Sanders is one that I agree with you on that. They also have the number one pick, so right, like they're going to have a rookie quarterback starting from day one mm -hmm. with Miles Sanders. They just got rid of DJ Moore. The um, they did add Hayden Hurst to the receiving game. Uh, he signed a three year deal. Hayden Hurst just keeps making money. Um, he's not a bad player. No, I don't. I don't think he's a bad player. I don't think he's a game breaker, but Carolina, they have to fix the wide receiver room a little bit, but this is a winnable division. That's another part of the story. And Miles Sanders is good. Mm -hmm. um, fifth in yards per carry since he entered the league. Yeah. He's, he's always he's, what, been he's 25 years old. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is his time. Yeah. He's always, he's always been a talented running back that, you know, was kind of stuck behind. He was never allowed to be the dude. You know, he was behind Saquon in college, and then he was in timeshares or injured for the Eagles. But every time you've watched him, he's he's performed very efficiently. So now you put him in a situation where he's the dude, because I, I don't think this is going to be a huge... Uh, I mean, they run the ball enough where there will be other backs involved, but he's going to get the lion's share of this offense. The next two moves at running back, I'm very interested yes. in. Oh, yes. yes. The Eagles, who have yeah. lost Miles Sanders, decided yeah. to take a chance. What'd they oh, do? Oh What'd God. they do? They signed Rashad Penny. How about it? Yeah, give me some. Yeah. Champ, champ, champ. Champ, 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 champ. <laughs> Everything runs through the filter of our leagues. Rashad Penny is on our Dino Jr. squad, and we thought it was it was done. We had no depth. And now maybe we have a superstar. Maybe. Mm -hmm. One year deal. With $600,000 guaranteed. Don't worry about that. Do not follow the money. <laughs> they're, look, they're not paying Rashad Penny a lot, which makes sense because he's coming off his 72nd uh, catastrophic injury. Mm -hmm. There is a very small percentage chance that he can play a full season and not get injured because we've never seen it before. But here's what we do know. He is one of the most efficient per touch backs in the NFL. That's not hyperbole. That's legit. He is unbelievable. In, in games where he gets 12 or more carries, he's basically the most dominant fantasy running back that you have. The problem has been just staying healthy. Now he goes to a team where they have one of the best offensive lines in the league, if not the best offensive line. The goal line and inside the 10-yard opportunities, we just saw You know, Miles Sanders, he had 11 touchdowns. And the, the ability to come in here – and have a really special season, that very much exists. He's got to stay healthy. He probably won't. This is a worth-the-gamble contract. They're not giving him a lot of money. But if he comes in and stays healthy, he could be dominant in this role because he's not the pass-catching specialist you know, that you usually want in fantasy. He's more of like a Derrick Henry type of runner. And this is the situation you know, where you, you don't have Jalen Hurts doing a million dump-offs. You you want big open lanes where he can just tear off a 40-yard touchdown run, and, and Rashad Penny has that talent. I will say this is the one of the three of us that didn't exchange a kind of a loud high five in the midst of this transaction. Because you don't have him on your dynasty squad. Um, that the range of outcomes is, is vast for yeah. Rashad Penny this year. Uh, Kenny Gainwell, Mike, you've been a big fan. I'm a big fan. You know, the monetary commitment to Rashad Penny does not guarantee touches. Sure. Uh, that's the only thing I'll say is like he has the opportunity, like Jason said, but we don't know how this will break down. Maybe part of keeping Rashad Penny on the field is not doing what Seattle tried to do, which was like when he was healthy, let's ride Rashad Penny. Um, but he's going to a great offensive situation. Uh, it's certainly worth the risk for Philadelphia. Um, because you can, you know, you have a big playability here. You have somebody that can go and uh, hit you in the mouth. And then Kenny Gainwell is going to be maybe, you know, if the hype train rides with Penny in the in the preseason, Gainwell could be a value as well. Yeah. And then before we move on from this, we've got to talk about Kenneth Walker as well. The 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 big worry I had for Kenneth Walker was that they 
be loyal to Penny and re-sign him again, and he'd come back healthy, and then it would be a timeshare. So so long as Bijan Robinson does not go to Seattle, uh, the situation just looks like it's going to be Kenneth Walker the third being a superstar this year. Well, let's talk about another situation that I think is better for the player than the one he was previously at. David Montgomery, three-year deal, eighteen million dollars with. The Detroit Lions. Oh, man. $11 million in guaranteed <laughs> money. Goes from a team that was ranked 32nd in offensive line to start last year to a team with a top five offensive line. Also pursued by this coaching staff and, or, and this organization, um, they let their heart and soul guy, Jamal Williams, sure. depart because they had the opportunity to get David Montgomery uh, they're vacating the most carries inside the five yard line because say, that was Jamal. The uh, the numbers I, so Jalen Hurts had 19 carries inside the five. He was tied for second with Ezekiel Elliott, who had 19 carries. At number one was Jamal Williams with 30. I think David Montgomery. <laughs> That's absurd. And I don't have like I don't have shares of him. This is not coming from a place of bias. I think he has top 10 potential this year in, in Detroit. I really do. This team does not view DeAndre Swift, which I know everyone in the back of your head, you're hearing all of us talk about this. You're saying, what about Swift? What about Swift? I have him in Dynasty. What do I do? What do I do? Not everyone. Um, I think Montgomery's going to have a huge year. Yeah, this is a monstrous contract for running backs in 2023. This is you know probably going to be the largest contract of the offseason. They are committing to him. They could have got well, the, the, the miles one is bigger. Uh, uh, yes, those those two they're very very similar in in uh, Guar guarantees. Yeah, yeah. It, and so those those are the two big win contracts. And you know you say well he's got top ten upside. Of course he does. Jamal Williams was the running back eight last year. They could have had Jamal Williams back cheaper. Knows the system was effective. They wanted to upgrade. They see David Montgomery as an upgrade. And the reason they see him as an upgrade is because, because he's, an, he's upgrade. an upgrade. Yeah, he is. David Montgomery in fantasy circles gets crapped on a lot because people are like disappointed with whatever they wanted him to be. He's good. He's a very, very good running back. And behind this offensive line, with his body size and goal line opportunities, I am uh, all about David Montgomery here. And it's really going to open up Swift to be a scat back or oh man or i mean he's oh, going to be really effective in that role for nfl purposes it's going to be where he should be but for fantasy purposes like i'm i'm going to be out on on swift swift certainly has the 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 talent and athleticism to where if david montgomery got injured um swift could be a league winner but these guys are both going to be drafted high enough where I will be pushing my chips on David Montgomery. Do you do you have any other thoughts, Mike, about that situation? Do you do you view Montgomery through that same lens? Um, what should dynasty managers do with DeAndre Swift right now, other than maybe hold some sort of ceremony and yeah, yeah. maybe invite Antonio Gibson along? And Swift is in the uh, the uh, the bucket of it's probably not going to happen now. I mean, I'm I'm a little more skeptical for David Montgomery be, because of I think that him being there and, and he can be a a great pass catcher too. But DeAndre Swift, that's where he is an actual difference maker on the football field. It's not running between the tackles; it's being out in space and shifty. And if they're really going to go like mostly two downs with Montgomery and then Swift catching a lot of passes on third down, like if if that's something that could happen for the Lions. It's a huge hit for David Montgomery. Yes, Jamal Williams was was crazy with his 30 attempts inside the five, but that was more of an anomaly of just th those weird seasons happen every once in a while where wide receivers just keep getting dragged down uh, inside the five and, and like like oh free touchdown here for Jamal Williams again who was he was he was sensational at it he got the job done but I but I think that he got more uh, the Next year, there won't be 30 carries for, for Detroit running backs inside the five. But I'm with you that Montgomery will be good. But I, I would it, where is he being drafted? And that will that's, the market will dictate if I'm in on David Montgomery. Yeah, I don't know where the over-under will be on his total touchdowns on the ground. But I, I, if he doesn't score, assuming he stays healthy, if he doesn't score more than eight touchdowns, I mm -hmm. would be my mind would be blown. That's the exact number. I, I've I've already been thinking about how I'm like going to stat, stat him out, and it's a minimum of nine. Yeah. 
I mean, this is a lot like James Conner in the in that situation where like Conner went from eighteen to eight, but like he's the dude, and, and the, they paid him to be the dude. Yeah, the I was going to say the contract is almost identical to the James Conner contract. All right, let's talk about Charbonnet some more. Uh, oh yes, the Bears Please. signed Travis Homer to a two year deal after the Montgomery transaction, or kind of maybe before, but they knew Montgomery was leaving. Um, Chicago has a first round pick, two seconds, a third, two fourths, two fifths. Khalil Herbert, this moment right here, right now, I think we need to give our listeners some help. Homer is added as a depth piece. Two-year deal, $4.5 million. Khalil Herbert, great when Montgomery wasn't on the field. Not a not a real pass catcher. Maybe he can do it. I think that a, a running back in this draft is going to the Chicago Bears. Certainly it is. It's a matter of where and who and whether they would be willing to take Bijan at number nine. If they did, no. if that's part of their plan. Um, I can't imagine it is. I would be surprised. I, I think eight and nine, though, those are the high end. That's that's uh, the Atlanta Falcons or the Chicago Bears. Those are two teams where you could see a path for them pulling the trigger on that. I doubt he goes that high. So long as it's not that, uh, because their next pick is 53. That's probably behind Gibbs. And it's not going to be, you know, they they could add a tank big. They have capital to move up to grab one, though. They they do, but if if it's not Gibbs or um, Bijan, then I I think Khalil Herbert is a huge winner here. So let's you're holding him then in dynasty league. You're not trying to move him now on this news because you don't think they're adding if somebody. Can, like what would you do this moment? This moment, I would be shopping Khalil Herbert because okay. I say he's a huge winner. We saw how talented he was. If you can sell him at the value of him being the dude, if someone believes, oh, man, he's going to be the dude now, I want him, well, then sure, because then if you get the price for him being the dude and he's the dude, whatever, you're fine. But there's also a world where they, you know, they go and sign Joe Mixon, you know, or, or someone like that. Or, or Kareem Hunt. Yeah, Kareem Hunt. There are so many running backs. Yeah. They're going to find homes, and, and they're big enough names out there that you're going to have at least three or four times this offseason where you're like, oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. That situation oh, yeah, yeah. seems so clean. Zeke. You, yeah, Zeke is going to be out there. I mean, it is out there. There are so many of the like the Madison, Herbert type of situations where you're going to be holding your breath the entire offseason going. Like one of one of those situations was in, um, in New England, right? Like so Damian Harris, free agent, out the door, yet another name that will arrive somewhere. He's not that old. Then you're saying, okay, well, I like I like Stevenson. Then you're like, who are they going to add? Because they're going to add somebody. How big of a name is it going to be? And then they didn't. Okay. Well, that's your <laughs> – all right. Well, the Patriots signed James Robinson to a two-year deal, and somehow it's worth Which up I'm, to eight, I'm sorry, James. $8 million. So this was a good – that's a move where you're like, okay, that's not so bad for Ramondre. I, I think it's excellent for Ramondre yeah. because it's enough money. To where it says we're there's not, not another one. There's not another one coming. More than likely, they'll you know maybe they add a day three running back and that's fine. But it doesn't seem like they're going to pull the trigger on anyone else of high capital if they're giving an eight million dollar. I guess it's up to eight million. I'm not sure what the guaranteed money is for James Robinson. It's probably but, low. Um, you know th that's Do what you that's what you want because it it really does say to me that Ramondre Stevenson will be the primary uh, ball carrier here. They also signed Juju Smith-Schuster to a three-year deal worth uh, $33 million, 16 guaranteed. I, it begs the question with these two signings and then the offseason we saw with them with Johnny Smith and Hunter Henry and El Snagalar and company, do the Patriots know what they're doing? I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm like every, every move that they have made since Tom Brady leaving the team, you lose a little bit more faith in what – they are doing. You had all the, the huge money contracts thrown at what Aguilar, um, yeah, they, Kendrick Bourne, who they like, who was great on the field, and yet they don't play him. Then they threw all the money at Hunter Henry and Janu Smith. They just traded Janu for a seventh rounder. I they they had two defensive guys as their offensive coordinators or last year. I don't know. I don't. I'm, I don't know that they know what they're doing up there anymore. I think both of these moves are are good moves for the Patriots. Well, they, here's okay. Here's the question then for because the Juju contract is essentially identical to what Jacoby Myers just got. <laughs> I was going to ask the uh, same question. It is a three year, 
33 million up to 33 million. It, uh, Jacoby got a little bit more in guaranteed money, but Jacoby was great for your team. Knows your system, which is like if we've had the the legends of veterans at, towards the end of their career being like, no, I'm going to go a couple more years in New England, get in training camp, and go. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> hey, no! Nope, nope! Right out you, of there. I would rather retire and. Jacoby already succeeds in it. Why would you not just resign him and go with Juju? That's where it's because Jacoby confusing. Meyer is not as good as Juju. Oh, I think he's better. No way. No way. We're back. Wait, you're back on Juju is good. I Juju, thought you were on Juju was not good. Juju is not great. He's not a superstar. He's not what we hoped when he had that rookie and sophomore season that looked outlandish. Jacoby Myers. He's never okay. I'm just verifying this. He's never had 900 receiving yards in a season. He's not. He's a fine slot receiver, but those Give are Give Jacoby kind of Patrick Mahomes. I say, and yeah, Juju barely surpassed 900 yards in 16 games played with Patrick Mahomes. Well, Juju's also had what? What's his peak? 1,600 yards? I yeah, know. but you just said he wasn't. It was 1,400, but you said he's not that. Uh, my point is he is a more talented overall wide receiver than Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers is nothing special. He is a fine run-of-the-mill Slot wide receiver Jacoby, oh, man. Jacoby Myers haymakers right now. I'm, I'm, I would rather have Jacoby Myers on my team. Yeah, I mean, it, it, to each their own. My own would be Juju easily over Jacoby Myers. Well, let's talk about Jacoby Myers. The Raiders gave him a three year deal worth thirty three million dollars, five million more guaranteed than Juju Smith Schuster. Um, good addition to complement Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro. Could be on the outside more than he's yes. been before. Say he's a replacement. Um, Jacoby Myers made some money this offseason. You, you're happy to see that. Jimmy Garoppolo, three-year deal with the Raiders, which is where I thought he'd go because yep. it just seemed inevitable at that point. Um, $67 million, $34 million guaranteed. Since we're just bringing up the context of our own fantasy football teams, Thrilled with the fact he's a <laughs> thrilled that he's a starter because my dynasty team did not have a backup quarterback after the 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 way things went and it, now I do. It was one of my first thoughts was stupid Andy. Yes, because <laughs> I kept trying. you knew that I had him. <laughs> oh yeah, because I I was trying to shield Tom Brady onto you last year. <laughs> yeah. at the end of the year, just over and over. And what? I was like, look, Jimmy Garoppolo is not going to be a starter, and of course the Raiders said. We need to upgrade this position. So let's get rid of Derek Carr and get that winner, Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, in here. Josh McDaniels, you know, familiarity with yeah. him. Yeah, Josh McDaniels has familiarity McDaniels. with Jacoby Myers Save as me, well. Jimmy. I mean, Jacoby Myers was with Josh McDaniels, and last he played, he was about 50% in the slot, 50% on the outside with, um, you know, when he was playing, uh, you know, with that same coaching staff. So th I, I think these moves both make sense. And the Jimmy Garoppolo move, it makes a lot of sense. People are like, why would you go from Derek Carr to Jimmy Garoppolo? Who Who's better? Say, go ahead and say Derek Carr. I don't care. <laughs> Flip a coin. Who's why are cheaper? you asking? My, my point is, it's irrelevant. Like, who's slightly better as an average middling NFL quarterback? It's there is, The gap isn't big enough. But the money gap is very significant. Jimmy Garoppolo comes in pretty cheap on i see what you're saying and so they save a lot of money they have just as good a quarterback or or nearly as good uh, i think the real interesting question here for the raiders is Devonte adams does jimmy garoppolo fit what Devonte adams can do they lost darren waller and i i view jacoby myers as someone that's not gonna take a lot away from Devonte adams so Devonte adams to me is gonna be right up there again 170 plus targets and just a machine here as far as PPR leagues. I mean, we had big games from Matt Collins last year, and it didn't hurt Devontae Adams. So I think you're right. Um, remind me to bet the under on the Raiders, Kyle, yeah. when, the, <laughs> when those lines come out, and then uh, the over on Monty. Those are my those are my two bets from the day so far. Uh, all right, let's talk Saints. Michael Thomas, one-year deal to come back. The word on the street was Michael Thomas recruited Carr. Carr re recruited Thomas to stay. And so they'll play a season together, and he's probably going to be undervalued. Yeah. Because yeah, if I, he's healthy, he's going to probably be very involved. We he had, was very good for a very short period of time before he got re-injured. I mean, week one, he was the wide receiver eight. Week two, he was the wide receiver 18. Uh, had, what, three touchdowns over the course of those two games, and then got injured. And it's a one-year deal. So, you know, 
if you want to go with the playing for the free agent contract narrative, he is 30 years old. And then Jameis Winston is just chill, man. This guy's just chill. He's cool. He's cool. He, he said, quote, I'm a championship level quarterback, but I like New Orleans. So I'm going to stay here and be the backup. Uh, I'm going to make $8 million just chilling in New Orleans. He's smarter than I have given him credit for <laughs> because this is brilliant. Just keep taking that backup money. Yes. <laughs> keep keep your body healthy. Stay on the sidelines. Be beloved. Nobody doesn't like a backup quarterback. Correct. Just keep he making just that money. He just gets to be the locker room guy. Yeah. All right, guys, let's go. And he doesn't have to do it. Uh, Juwan Johnson, two-year deal, $12 million. Yeah. So he's back in New Orleans. Has a chance. He's a pass catcher. And then Jamal Williams, three-year, $12 million oh, deal. Man. This got messy. It did because uh, <laughs> Jamal was so happy in Detroit. Yeah. And then they're like, hey, you won't go anywhere else. He's like, hmm, where I, go someplace other than where I'm happy and enjoying myself. And then uh, they moved on, and he gets $8 million in, in New Orleans. And so Jamal Williams and, I mean, and Alvin Kamara's career trajectory is – I mean, the legal situation, the That's, lack of touchdowns for years now. We're, we're back. We are back with Jamal Williams yet again of him being probably a later round addition. And like, if you go back, you know, the two years ago, uh, was it Swift who was, had started hurt? And it was, we knew that Jamal was going to be the week one guy. And then, and he had an incredible week. And then he went on through the season and was a, a spot starter. Same thing happened last year. It's going to happen again because com- what are we? What are you guys feeling right now? That what is your sentiment on the over under of of games missed to start the year for Alvin Kamara due to legal situations? I think it's four. Yeah, that's the number that's Could in be my six. head as well. I, I, yeah, I I, th- I think it'll be four. And if it's four, I mean, is he being drafted? Jamal, if- I, we we don't. It's we still need. We'll need. No, no, some no. I mean, time. but I'm asking the question: If it's four games, who has a higher ADP, Jamal Williams or Alvin Kamara? Alvin still Kamara. I would think it's still Kamara, but Jamal Williams, if he's going, you know, in the eighth round, to know that you're going to get a month, which we don't know that yet, we're just projecting. But if you know you're going to get a month of him being value, the the dude value, like, that's that's what we've talked about on this show is fantasy football. Like break things down. Don't just think in terms of the season and totality of like I'm. I need to win. These two weeks, these four weeks, how am I going to do that? Jamal Williams is going to be sitting right there for everybody. Yeah. I mean, and we've seen it time and time again, the opportunities for these guys at the beginning of the year. Maybe that changes a little of the equation. We know Jamal can be relevant just on the touchdown front. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it's like even when Kamara comes back, who's to say Jamal doesn't – I mean, he's kind of earned himself a reputation at this point. Yeah, 100%. $8 million guaranteed a three-year contract. This is – someone that will be relevant in games Kamara plays. So, yeah, go ahead and take the shot when you know he's going to have a few games to himself, especially if you do – by the time the season comes along, if we know it's to start the year, if we know that the, the suspension is done and he's going to miss the first umpteen games, then Jamal Williams is a great pick. Umpteen? Mm-hmm. That's a lot. I mean, it's pronounced with an umpteen. Yeah. <laughs> if, that, if, that's, if the suspension paperwork memo comes out – you were suspended for up to umpteen, umpteen games. games this season. That's a lot. The Dolphins said nay to all the free agent running backs and the the draft running backs, and they brought all four back, Raheem Mostert, Jeff Wilson, back on two-year deals. Salvin Ahmed, Miles Gaskin, one-year deals. I mean, this is certainly carries risk because Mostert, again, you know, keeps getting hurt, but this is, this is how you do it. I mean, these – were super productive running backs between Mostert and Jeff Wilson. They were great for the team. They were very good for fantasy football. You're not breaking the bank, and your position is taken care of. Uh, they, I thought this was masterful okay. by the Dolphins. Yeah, you like the, Wilson or Mostert more? I mean, Wilson. yeah. It. I, I feel like the, the question was answered that when both are ready to go, they lean – Jeff Wilson, but it, it will fluctuate throughout the season. Yeah, it was really back and forth last year, but there were a few examples where both were healthy and active, and it seemed like it was Jeff Wilson. But I'm also going to take the 27-year-old over the 31-year-old sure. when, when they're playing. In general, I think Jeff Wilson's a good pickup, and this is also probably part and parcel to giving Chase Edmonds a deal last year and being like, oh, man, so we can't just pick him right. These guys work. Yeah. Just bring them back. That's, yeah, I think Mike's right about the financial part of it. It's smart. Mike White, two-year deal with the Dolphins? 
to be the backup, uh, also known as the guy that will probably play a bunch. Mm -hmm. um, the Bucks signed Baker Mayfield to a one-year deal. Oh, man. For Tampa Bay. <laughs> I mean, no, Kyle, hey, Trask, he, Kyle Trask got this. I was going to say, the spoiler alert, Baker's going to win the job over Kyle <laughs> Trask. Uh, Chase Edmonds also gets a one-year deal with the Bucks. They're set, they're building this team so that it can um, – Rebuild? Rebuild, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Texans signed Robert Woods to a two-year deal. They gave him too much money. Mm -hmm. uh, um, congrats to Robert Woods. And they should be getting John Mechie back, who I really liked. Sure. Uh, missed last year recovering from leukemia. Glad to hear that. San, uh, not the leukemia the, yeah, that he's getting course, better. Goodness course. gracious! Has there been a, a, a report? Do we know that he's like I, I? I looked a couple months ago and I couldn't find anything about whether he's going Where to be back. Do or, we know if he'll be good to go? I do. Yeah. I don't. Kyle, know that. did you? Were you reporting this on just speculation, or did you see oh, it someplace? Uh, it says he's making strides in his recovery, according to GM Nick Casario. Okay. Okay. So they good. expect him to be back. Sam Darnold, one-year deal with the 49ers. All right, he'll probably take him to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Brock Purdy underwent surgery. Yeah, it was the, had it. it was the repair, so he can begin throwing in three months. It could take six months to be cleared. Oh man, um, I am still I'm, look. I am on record on this show. We we asked the question: Who do we think is the starting quarterback of the 49ers? And here, Andy, the the ever present anti Trey Lance guy, I go on record and I say I think it'll be Trey Lance. It's got to be Trey Lance, right? I don't know. I don't know. I hope so. I, I, it's just like the way everybody talks about Trey Lance is like, it's like everybody knows something except for Trey Lance. And they all know it, and they're like, whether it's, you know, the Ian Rappaport or or Adam Schefter, when they just speculate about the position, whether it's George Kittle's comments about Purdy and like, you know, just, oh, he's the guy, you know, or there's just something, there's something off. In the or whether it's uh, John Lynch scratching his head when they ask him the question. <laughs> hey, uh, oh yeah, the body language. Yeah, the body language good. is like uh, yeah. like that should be the go-to for Trey Lance. Is like maybe he'll be yeah. maybe he'll be the yeah. starter. I mean, at this point, I don't know what you're rooting for if you have a if you have a weapon in the San Francisco offense on your fantasy team, like McCaffrey or Debo or Ayuk or Kittle. I don't know if you should be rooting for Trey Lance. No, I don't think if if you are rooting for the ancillary pieces, I then you're probably rooting for Brock Purdy. The rushing, wild. The rushing yardage that will take away from passing yardage uh, that uh, projected for Trey Lance is not helpful to the weapons. And I'm not going to say that Lance is a full mistake yet. We don't know. I mean, the injuries. Uh, but I just want, like, we had a show. It was the 10 Things to Remember episode where Mike brought up NFL teams make mistakes. Mm -hmm. the, the 49ers have been one of the more successful franchises in recent years. Right, mm -hmm. the Rams have been one of the more successful franchises in recent years. Yet you have this potential bad trade up for Trey Lance. You had the acquisition of Allen Robinson for too much money last year. Like it's just the point that great franchises sometimes you you swing and you miss. Sure, uh, a couple other quick signings to mention: Taylor Heineke to the Falcons, Jacoby Brissett to the Commanders. Um, Why is Samaje in the quick ones? Sam yeah, that's Samaje P. Ryan. Whatever. Signed we're, by the Broncos. We're talking about it. so Samaj P. Ryan, two year deal, seven point five uh worth, you know, always up to seven and a half million dollars. Three million guaranteed. And Samaj P. Ryan is a good NFL running back. Like he has sustained all of the ups and downs of his careers. He got <laughs> careers. He, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Plural? Plural of them. Well, I mean he had the career in Washington, he had the career in Cincinnati, and now he's with the Denver Broncos. And he can uh, he can also catch passes, and if Sean Payton wants to bring back in a system where his running backs are catching a lot of passes, Javante Williams, who knows? Who knows when he will be ready? Will it be the beginning of the year? Will it be halfway through the year? Will he come back at the beginning and then go right back out like J.K. Dobbins did? It is so questionable whether Javante will be ready to play this year and I think that Samaj P. Ryan is a very solid pickup by this team and will probably have more fantasy value than people want to talk about right now. Prior to this signing or any free agency, we talked a lot about the Detroit or the, or the, the Denver Broncos yes. system, what a great landing spot it is for some running back to start that year, whether they would be, you know, we had a lot of speculation as to Alexander Madison and Kareem Hunt. Who, who are they going to go after? We knew they were going to go after somebody. Samaj P. Ryan is unheralded 
is not the person that we get excited about, but the situation is exciting and similar to Jamal Williams going in and possibly being the starter for the beginning of the season, mm-hmm. if yes. Kamara is suspended, that's a very similar situation you could have here with Samaj P. Ryan coming in if Javante isn't ready to go, where you've got a, a a team that is going to run the ball well and is going to throw the ball to the running back, and he can he could do both of those things. So Samaj P. Ryan is is interesting, but TBD to see if they add any more running backs. That's what it is for me. It's, it's how big of a piece of the non Javante puzzle will he be in this offense sure probably a draft pick maybe coming their way as well but like you said it'll it'll come down to those ancillary pieces and so many free I mean it could be Zeke tomorrow yeah I it, mean I I don't know what that offense is going to look like P Ryan did get three million guaranteed and the, the we've ran the numbers of Sean Payton's the for the team the team fantasy running back score is always essentially a top five like his running backs produce now and it's always almost always been a platoon of guys and I, I think p ryan's going to be involved guys we did it we got through all the big news we made it and the p ryan news yes both anything else brooksy anything breaking during the show nothing yet no okay well that'll do it for today's episode of the show thanks for joining us more free agent signings we're going to do winners and losers episode uh very soon mailbag dynasty download lots coming your way from the fantasy footballers and definitely check out jointhefoot.com check out the deucer cast i enjoyed it it was a good time goodbye everybody goodbye thank you for listening to another episode of the fantasy footballers podcast join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on twitter at the ff ballers